Good morning. Welcome back to the DNS Dev Room. Uh, our next speaker is Erin Hofman. He will be speaking about the state of DGB DNS Curve 6. Oh, 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 oh. oh. Spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> you, you leaked my. Oh, yeah, this, yeah. Let's try that again. Full screen. Yeah. Technology, I'm sorry. It's it's latish. Fine. Let's okay. do it. Good that's, luck. That's working. Hey. Yeah, good morning everybody. Thanks for the invitation here for Fostom here for the talk here. And uh, I will try to give you some ideas about what I did regarding the further developments of DJB DNS, in particular what I've called DJB DNS Curve 6. Stay behind the line. Oh, behind, the, behind that line, okay, yes, fine, yeah, yeah, okay, fine. And I also uh, would like to provide you some ideas about a particular use case that means how to integrate uh, IPv6, uh, IPv6 uh, link local unicast addresses here to use it on a stub resolver and a DNS server. So that's a particular use case which I think it's quite nice in order to get some ideas about uh, IoT devices here. So uh, let's make uh, at first some kind of historical note. DJP DNS curve, essentially it's, a, it's a, a fork of Daniel Bernstein's uh, uh, DJP DNS. I'm not here to advocate uh, Bernstein and I'm not here to talk about the benefits of curved DNS versus DNSSEC. That's not the, so, the scope of my topic here, but rather what I did so far is to, uh, to make it more usable here, the, the, the software here of Daniel Bernstein, and also to provide some kind of libraries which you can use for standard projects, let's say. And one of those libraries I call FVH QLIPS, or simply QLIPS, which simply integrate all the uh, all the functions you need in order to do IPv6 uh, address passing, in particular CIDR, rec uh, CIDR recognition and also uh, the use of socket interface and all that stuff what you actually need for network programming. So. Um, this is done in a, in a way we have a DNS stub resolver we can use, and on the other side, DJB DNS Curve 6, it's a more or less full-blown DNS server, although uh, with a limited scope, more or less. So the achieved results I would like to present here are mainly a part of the results we have done at the University of uh, at the University of, at, in Frankfurt, University of, uh, of Applied Sciences here, together with my students, and I put them in, into software here, and I presented it here in that way. So also, uh, if you'd like to have some deeper understanding of the uh, IP version 6 protocol, you can read, if you can read German, some of my books, which is called Technique of the IP Networks here. So what I actually cover here in my talk here is a little bit about the history of DJB uh, DNF Curve 6 and also my, my software library, QLIPS. I would like to introduce you to the ideas of uh, using uh, IPv6 addresses and in particular IPv6 link local unicast addresses here for DNS services, applying those to servers and clients, of course, and maybe also to discuss some use cases why it is beneficial to do so. So it seems actually DNS is something uh, for the uh, for the for the for the uh, for the old uh, gray man here, as we have seen so far. Let's see what we can do about that. Now, just. Uh, to give you some kind of history, uh, I support the, uh, the software of, D of Bernstein here since about 20 years, I would say. So initially I, I did some patches here for QMail, now I have my own fork running, which is called SQMail, and this is more or less aligned with what uh, Felix von Leitner does, which is known to be the German blogger Fefe here, and we all, we a little, little bit work together in, in, a little, in, in, this, uh, in this context here. And what I did so far was essentially to make all the routines uh, Bernstein has developed, like UCSP, uh, TCP and QMail and the, in particular the DJB DNS here to make it IPv6 aware. And in the sense, IPv6 is really completely supported by the product and not just uh, in, in, in the terms of patches over here. So uh, the current releases, what I do have, is DJB DNS Curve uh, 6 uh, in, a, in a version 36A, and uh, the current running uh, DNS stub resolver library is uh, part of the, of the QLIPS uh, in, version, uh, in the version 12C so far. So you see on that table here what are the, what are the essential uh, servers, servers, which are, servers which are coming with the uh, DJB DNS Curve 6. Essentially, I do have a content server, which is called TinyDNS. That's really tiny. It just speaks UDP, and it has no other understanding, more or less, except for the complete uh, IPv6 support. 
I also have a software piece which is called RELDNS. It's a, it's a relay blacklist daemon. And the, it's actually quite nice because it also provides you with the capability to have IP version 6 addresses in here and to look up those here for, uh, for, span, for in particular span protection here. I do have all DNS inside there, but the main routine essentially is what I call DNS cache, which is a caching server, a, name, uh, a recursive name uh, server here, which is used essentially for the, for the clients in order to contact to. So this DNS cache, as you can see, has the benefits. It includes TCP support and UDP support. EDN uh, is support is, is done on the server side, and the curve DNS has been completely included. So what you can get here is that you can receive encrypted uh, DNS responses, and, and of course you do the query also uh, in, 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 a, in a secure way. The clients are pretty slim. We have uh, so, some clients, which is DNS IP. It's uh, DNS MX to look, up the, uh, to, to look up the MX records. It's a DNS name. It's getting the pointer records here. And it's DNS text to get the text records. That's all I have. It's nothing really uh, particular in here and cannot compare with other full-blown software stacks like PowerDNS or, uh, or Bind, whatever you have. So it's a really tiny section over here. So the idea what I had was Back some years when I gave some lecture, lectures about distributed systems here uh, at the Vietnamese uh, German University in Ho Chi Minh City to solve somehow the so-called Byzantinian, Byzantinian generals problem to get valid answers essentially from a collaborating system. But that's the basic idea without using essentially uh, signatures like DNSSEC it's providing. Now, the main idea here of that talk is to give you some ideas why it is useful to have IP version 6 link local, cast, link local unicast address support in DNS. It gives a particular scope here, and let's, let's discuss essentially some, some important items here. At first, um, the uh, IP version 6 link local cast addresses are prohibited to be part of a zone file. That means you cannot have an FE80 kind of address here in a zone file. It's, it's simply not working. You, can, you probably can do that, but it's not working because you're lacking the so-called interface index here. And that's actually expressed here already in the, uh, in the RFC uh, 4471, essentially. So you cannot do that. But on the other hand, you are free to bind your DNS server and also to use your DNS client a sub-resolver here to use IP version 6 uh, so-called link local cast unicast addresses here. And I don't know which, which product is actually using this, but at least you can get that here with my kind of software here. That means we have to solve two essential problems over here. One problem is that the DNS server, whether it is a content server or a cache server, uh, it needs to bind to a link local unicast address, which only can be done if you, pro if you actually perform uh, an additional information, which we call the interface index. Second, we have to tell the DNS stuff resolver that it can use this kind of address, and that's the more tricky part, and how this is done, I'm just just will tell in a few minutes here. So um, I don't know how, uh, how well you are familiar with the IP version 6 protocol and its, and its benefits. So it's a little bit diff different beast like IP version 4, what we have seen before. So the main idea of IP version 6 is the following, that everything what you do essentially is auto-configured. And you can see that here on the, very f on the, on the slide on the, left -hand, on the, on the right hand side here. So what essentially the client does in case, it is, in, in case it, it's, uh, it's going online on the network, so you get some kind of link here on the network, it asks for essentially a prefix and also it does some kind of auto configuration of the IP address. We call this stateless address, auto address configuration over here. That means the client looks for an IP, uh, it, it configures itself an IP version 6 address, which is in the beginning a so-called link local unicast address, starting with every 80 essentially. So that's the basic idea. Now the next step in the IP version 6 network, if it is a real IP version 6 network, is that we have a router in the network which does some kind of router advertisements. The router adver advertisements uh, are done again using this IP version 6 LLU address and the router advertisements provide us with the, with, the, with, the, uh, with the network prefix here like 2001 something blah 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 and also we can get the IP addresses of the routers and in particular what we can also get and that's, the very, uh, the very, uh, that's point number three you can get information about the DNS services. That means the DNS servers, the recursive name servers in your network are published or could be published by means of a router advertisement 
advertisement daemon, for instance, and uh, uh, in addition with the IP version 6 address, it can publish a search list here. So that's quite nice to have it. You know. it's, all, it's, all in, it's all confined. And the very interesting idea about that is everything here, uh, what is happening on that slide here, is happening using link local, cast of, uh, link local unicast addresses or perhaps, or perhaps some kind of uh, multicast addresses. So let's have an idea about the addresses. The address strategy in IP version 6 is a little bit different uh, regarding IP version 6. So it very strongly depends on the very first bit of the IP version 6 address. It starts with the highest bits to be won. We, these are multicast addresses. Remember, in IP version 6, we do not have any broadcast, just multicasts. Yeah? And from here, we have a kind of functional addresses. And one particular functional address is the, uh, DNS, uh, is the DNS multicast address, which is shown here to be FF01. Uh, uh, FB at the, very, at the very end. So we can have multicast uh, services here, DNS service here on the network, but that's nothing I talk about today. It's, it's a future project, essentially. Now, uh, we need to understand in IP version 6 networks, information essentially is, is sent to multicast addresses, and that's this idea here, that we, have, uh, uh, that we use a multicast address as a recipient address. The target address, uh, rather, could either be a unicast address or it could be what we call an unspecified address. The unspecified address is something you know in the IP version 6 network, which is simply, uh, 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 simply indicated by the double dots. The double dots is the unspecified address. And that's at the very, at the very lowest line. That means in an IP version 6 address, everything is, essentially, everything is essentially set to zero. So, oh, sorry. And then you can get the hierarchy here. We have the, we have the, we have the uh, host addresses here, the, back, the loopback address here. We have the LLU addresses. We have the ULA addresses, which are a little bit about like, like IP version 4 private addresses here. And we have the routable addresses in the IP network, which is a blue zone over here. So, the problem is now how, how to get a server, uh, how to make a server understanding about the interface index here. And I have chosen in my software two different ways. The one way you can specify additionally with the IP version 6 address, like FE80, uh, FE80 dot dot one, for instance, you can specify as a certain, as a particular argument, the interface, uh, the interface name, like ETH0 or Whatever you like to do, you know, that's, uh, that's something you can do. The other way is you have something like a composite address. And the composite address essentially includes on the one side the, uh, the respective uh, IP version 6 LLU address and then concatenated by means of a percent sign the particular interface name. Yeah, that can be done. Now, remember, in the IP version 6 world, we have, uh, we, have in, we, we have the following very important issue. The IP version 6 address, uh, given its uh, uh, LLU variant, it can, be, uh, it can be the same on different interfaces. And that's the reason why we have the, the requirement to have this interface index, whatever you have, whatever you need so far. So that's the idea of how to bind it. That's pretty easy. You can find it in my software. It's online. You can see the links later on, and, and you, you can see how to do it. That's the basic idea. Now, in particular for a DNS service, it would be very nice to have a common service for IP version 4 and IP version 6, of course. It's the same information. We do not have different zone files or databases for IP version 4 and IP version 6. I rather do not like to have a particular forwarding and, and reverse zone. I would like to keep it simply in a simple database here. And in order to do so, you need to, you need to bind the server both to the available IP version 4 and IP version 6 addresses. That's not that easy because mostly today uh, the operating system uh, inhibits this and you have to find a particular socket setting in order to do so. And in my software, I have chosen a simple scheme. That means if, I, if you are uh, if you're, uh, using uh, the software and to simply define a, dot, a, 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 a colon uh, Zero address, it says, bind to all available IP version 4 and IP version 6 addresses. And that's done. That means now a DNS cache can, uh, can uh, essentially handle uh, uh, requests from IP version 4 and IP version 6 clients. Remember, what's also interesting in the, and that's in the, in, the, in the box down there, in the IP version 6 network, you have now three loopback interfaces. The one loopback interface is given for the IP version 4 address. That's a common 12701. We have the global scope loopback interface, which is it, which is it, uh, with colon colon one address, and we have a local scoped loopback interface in a BSD kind of software in a BSD Unix. Simply, it's, it is expressed as FE80 uh, colon colon one 
percentage allow allo, allo zero, for instance. Yeah? So we have a different kind of guy here. We could, you can bind a service to any of those addresses. Now, let's have a, a real understanding what the thing is doing. That's a more general uh, picture here, what my DNS cache is doing. It receives, essentially, requests from the clients. These requests from, from the clients can, can originate from an IP version 4 network, they can originate from an IP version 6 network, or they can reach the server by means of a link local unicast addresses. Yeah? That means I can configure that server to, to listen to all these kind of addresses. So that's quite nice. On the other hand, the forwarding of the query to the internet, to the, rec to the, uh, the recursion, could be done on a completely different address. That means recursion and, and, uh, and listening are sitting on different IP addresses, so we can, you, can, uh, you can have more, uh, more resilient situation here. It's a more robust way in order to do the DNS lookup here. And you see, I do not currently support DNS sec validation, but that's a project which will come al also. So that's the difference here. Now, if you see if you see uh, the, the dual stack binding, what I have is indicated here on the yellow box, having the, having the dollar, uh, having the colon zero kind of address. And there's one other address which is, of quite of, which is quite of some interest. I can use in my software the double colon address to bind to the unspecific address. To bind to the unspecific address, which is actually used not for receiving, but it's actually used just for sending. So what does that mean? Um, this means essentially that I can do what I call reverse IP version 6 anycasting, which means in an IP version 6 network, you can actually have uh, the generation of, uh, of, of, the, of uh, interfaces here on demand. That means you can set up a VLAN, uh, a VLAN interface on demand for a software defined network, for instance. And here, what you can do essentially is the server is able to bind to newly generated interfaces. So as soon as it recognizes a new IP version 6 address, it binds automatically to that new address without any kind of reconfiguration. That's completely done automatically. And there you use a specific socket option in order to do so. So that's a nice thing. That means you, you can generate this kind of, uh, these kind of bindings here, which are uh, not common these days. Now the more tricky part is the DNS stuff resolver. The problem is the DNS stuff resolver regarding the Unix operating system is mostly based on what we have seen. It's called the uh, uh, system-wide configuration file, which is simply etcresolve.conf. The problem with the etcresolve.conf is it is not standardized. There is no RFC telling what is the format. And there is no way to integrate an uh, IP version 6 LLU address in that DNS configuration file. No way. That's, it simply doesn't work. Yeah? You can try it, but it does not work. Essentially, you can break it. So that's the standard Unix way, to have a central, uh, a central, a central uh, system-wide configuration file. The Windows operating system makes it different. The Windows operating system essentially generates uh, for each uh, interface a certain uh, possibility to, to forward the DNS requests over the interface here. So that's interface specific. What I use in my software, according to what Daniel Bernstein actually uh, has coded, is an application-specific kind of binding. That's very similar to DOH. If you have DOH, you have a web browser, it simply checks for its own name resolver. And that's what you can do here also for any application using it. Well, that's quite nice to see that this is uh, working that way. So, Essentially, it's, uh, it's this kind of configuration what we have. In a standard way, we have the etcresolve.conf. And you remember, the etcresolve.conf, just what we have uh, uh, heard from Ren Renzo, it's essentially fed with information coming from either uh, from, the right, from the router advertisement daemon or from the DHCP server or from the DHCP version 6 server, or you could, to, you could enter configuration in etc DN, uh, etcresolve.conf manually. But it's overwritten by any of those services. Yeah? You cannot rely on it. It could change. You know, everything could change. Here, yeah? Well, that's a rather unfavorable situation, more or less. Yeah? Essentially, what we need to have is a DNS hint. A DNS hint in, uh, says what are the DNS recursive uh, servers we need, to, we need to contact here and what is our local domain, essentially. Typically, uh, this is done in the, uh, in the, in the libresolve.so uh, uh, shared object file here, given the bind APIs, but that's a standard situation. Now, the way I did it is a little bit different. 
the way I do it here is that I have a, a specific library given my QLibs here, or the DJB uh, DNS Curve 6 uh, libraries here, which needs to be linked with your, with your application. Given this uh, linked application, you can have a certain environment variable, which is called a DNS cache IP. And now you can say in the DNS cache IP environment variable which name servers you need to, uh, which name servers you can actually uh, contact to, in particular including the interface index. <laughs> and also what you could have here to define what is your local domain. That means you can have a, you can have a specific network setting for an application which is using this kind of an interface here. So uh, this is uh, aside from the, from the standard libresource.com, for instance. And um, this uh, feature, what I have introduced, of course, does a fallback. The fallback simply says, if these environment variables are not present, simply use the standard etcresolve.com, of course. Yeah? So these, these things are not... Uh, are not uh, 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 these things are not in opposite, but rather you can use them all together. So that's the basic idea. Yeah. Now, given this idea, you can set up some kind of you can we can set up some kind of some kind of uh, services. Uh, you can have IoT communication, and here essentially the software is so tiny that you can uh, you can build up uh, by means of these libraries here DNS resolve routines here for IoT devices uh, and that stuff. So uh, that is one, ca one, one case one case you can do. You could have uh, this solution to be used for software defined networking here, having virtual interfaces, yeah, which you actually uh, can can feed now. And also you can have here the situation where you can have here some kind of information centric networking defining particular DNS services for an application. Yeah. So Time is over. I'm sorry about that. So Lookout essentially here is uh, what I would like to do here is to add multicast support to my stuff here, add TCP support to tiny DNS server, and all the other projects are in the, in the, in the, in the future essentially. So that's it for my point. Thank you very much. Thank you, Aaron. I'm sorry, we have no time for questions. So where, where can people find you if they have questions? Pardon? Where can people find you? Will you stick around for a bit? I stick around for a bit, and uh, on my slides you find a lot of uh, IP addresses you can use here, and, and uh, the URLs you, you can you'll use You'll be here. at one of those. Pardon? You will be at one of those addresses. Of course, okay. yeah. Other, otherwise, simply, uh, simply Google for that, it's, it's easy. Yeah. Sorry about that. I will update the, uh, the, uh, the transparencies with some kind. Of information. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um